I'm Shoji Adachi, Project General Manager from Toyota's Unit Management Division. Today I'd like to talk about our new Maximized Efficiency Engine Series. Here is an overview of today's presentation. First, I'd like to talk about the Unit Center, which is responsible for the new engine series. The Unit Center was established in April 2013 as a business unit within the Toyota organization alongside Lexus International, Toyota No. 1, and Toyota No. 2. Through the establishment of the unit center, now we have a system for end-to-end -end development of major powertrain components, hybrid components, and engines. Ever better cars require the world's most competitive units, and that is why the unit center exists. Within this organization, there is joint development between planning and development, and also production engineering. This enables streamlined product development. One key feature of the organization is the Powertrain Joint Development Building. This building aims to enhance coordination between technology development and production engineering. Staff from both teams work together on the same floor to enable close communication. This lets us develop technologies as efficiently and quickly as possible. Now I'd like to explain Toyota's approach to engine development. As you might know, improving fuel economy is about extracting more work from each drop of fuel. The goal is to maximize efficiencies within the powertrain and produce as much engine torque as possible. How that power is distributed to the wheels is what we call drivetrain efficiency. We can increase the fuel efficiency of a vehicle by improving aerodynamics or developing lightweight vehicle bodies, but for this presentation I would like to focus on engine efficiency. I would like to start by talking about improving engine thermal efficiency. This chart gives a conceptual breakdown of the idea of thermal efficiency. The energy in the fuel needs to be translated into work, and thermal efficiency is the efficiency with which that is done. In these graphs, the horizontal axis is engine speed and the vertical axis is engine torque. The contour lines show thermal efficiency, and the red area shows where thermal efficiency is highest. The blue line represents a commonplace transmission. Following this line lets you see the thermal efficiency with which a vehicle will actually be driven. To improve fuel economy, we need to expand this red area, but we must also improve efficiency inside the red area. When we develop our engines, our focus is on thermal efficiency. Now I would like to talk about our new engine series with higher thermal efficiency and lower fuel consumption. With engines from this series, we have achieved efficiency improvements of at least 10% compared to our current engines. This means our engines will be at the world's top level in terms of maximum thermal efficiency. This chart shows the improvement in the maximum thermal efficiency of engines in recent years. In 1997, for hybrids, we developed an internal combustion engine with particularly high thermal efficiency. Recently, we have developed engines for hybrids with maximum thermal efficiency approaching that of diesel engines, which are known to be extremely efficient. By combining the thermal efficiency improvements we've made in our hybrid engines with the technologies we've developed for our conventional internal combustion engines, we are now able to achieve the thermal efficiency of hybrid vehicles in our internal combustion engines in non-hybrid powertrains. But why couldn't we do that before? This chart compares the performance of hybrid engines with conventional engines with the same displacement. With high thermal efficiency technologies, such as those used in our hybrids, there is often a loss of performance or torque. Electric motors in hybrid vehicles can make up for this loss of performance, but it is a serious issue in conventional engines. With the new engines, however, we were able to resolve these issues. This conceptual depiction of thermal efficiency is similar to the one I showed you earlier. Hybrid and conventional engine technologies have been combined, and in addition, 
improvements in combustion and loss reduction have been extremely important in developing the technologies behind these new engines. Here is a list of the technologies behind these improvements. They are rapid combustion, a higher compression ratio, reduced pumping loss through use of the Atkinson cycle and large volume called EGR, and low friction. The right hand side of this chart shows which technologies have been used and refined in hybrid engines and which have been used and refined in conventional engines. Both hybrid engines and conventional engines have used and refined rapid combustion technology and higher compression ratios. Now let me talk about these in more detail. First, rapid combustion. Rapid combustion uses vertical vortex tumble flow. In the graph on the right hand side, the vertical axis represents the discharge coefficient, air flow, which is linked to performance. As the graph shows, air flow will decrease if you strengthen tumble flow. In developing these new engines, we managed to achieve both high tumble flow strength and high air flow. In other words, these engines take advantage of rapid combustion without losing performance. This video shows rapid combustion with high tumble flow, seen from the piston side. On the left hand side we have a current engine, and on the right hand side is one of our new engines. The combustion is too fast for us to see, so here it is again slowed down. Combustion shows up as the white area in the video. As you can see, combustion occurs much more rapidly in the new engine. Now I'd like to talk about compression ratios. Increasing compression ratios in gasoline engines can lead to abnormal combustion, also known as knocking. In order to avoid this, the timing of combustion is changed, but this leads to reduction of output. To avoid knocking and maintain and improve power performance, we implemented the following three improvements in the new engines. The first is rapid combustion which I've already talked about. As much fuel as possible will be burned as quickly as possible to prevent knocking before it can occur. The next is scavenging in the combustion chamber. Scavenging means the process of pushing exhaust gas charge out of the combustion chamber. If this doesn't happen, high temperature gas will remain within the combustion chamber when the new air enters. This will increase the temperature of the new air and lead to knocking. As you can see here, we have developed a compact exhaust manifold and improved scavenging, mitigating knocking to a large degree. Third, we have improved combustion chamber temperature control. Tumble flow occurs when exhaust travels in a rotary motion after coming into contact with the combustion chamber wall. A lot of heat comes from the cylinder wall, as you can see in the diagram. In order to avoid this, we have developed a method of controlling the overall temperature within the cylinder. The water jacket around the cylinder features a spacer. As a result, temperatures are lower in the upper part of the cylinder where high temperatures are likely to lead to knocking. At the same time, temperatures are increased in the lower parts of the cylinder, reducing friction loss. Next, we have the reduction of pumping loss. We have made significant improvements in combining the Atkinson cycle with large volume called EGR. As you know, the Atkinson cycle is used in hybrids. However, with conventional engines, sufficient performance will not be achieved. If you want power, you need to use variable valve technologies to return to a standard combustion cycle. For this to happen, expanded VVT operating angles and electronic VVT are necessary. Large volume cooled EGR means incorporating exhaust gas recirculation technologies into the combustion chamber, reducing pumping loss. We use high efficiency EGR coolers and high response EGR valves to implement large volume cooled EGR. 
Actuators are coordinated to improve response and optimize combustion under a wide variety of driving conditions. Here is a video to demonstrate this idea. The actuators are controlled in a coordinated manner, including the throttle. Airflow and EGR are controlled using high response EGR valves, EGR coolers, and MTVVT. With Atkinson cycle combustion, VVT is adjusted, allowing optimized combustion under all driving conditions. Now I would like to talk about the reduction of loss resulting from friction. This graph charts the decrease in engine friction in recent years. The green dots are Toyota's conventional engines. The larger red dots are Toyota's hybrid engines. As you can see, Toyota has been working on developing low friction engines since the late 1990s and we have been leading the way for a long time. And with our new technologies, we will continue to lead our competitors in low friction engine development. Next, let me talk about two types of engines we will be announcing soon. Let's start with our new 1.3 litre gasoline engine. With this engine, we have implemented the combustion and loss reduction improvements I've mentioned already. Thanks to these, the engine's maximum thermal efficiency is equal to or higher than our original hybrid engine at 38%. With the idling stop function, vehicles with this engine will see an improvement in fuel efficiency of 15% compared to current models. Next, we have a 1.0 litre engine. This is Toyota's lowest displacement engine and it achieves a maximum thermal efficiency of 37%. The vehicles with this engine will feature the idling stop function and other low fuel consumption technologies and this will lead to fuel efficiency improvements of a maximum of 30% over current models. Now, let me talk about future improvements. As you've seen, we've made significant improvements to combustion and loss reduction with these new engines. We have increased maximum thermal efficiency. And we'll be introducing a wider lineup of engines featuring these technologies. Within two years, 14 high thermal efficiency, low fuel consumption engines utilizing these technologies will be introduced around the world and we will continue to work on developing even higher efficiency, environment-friendly engines. As part of our efforts to make ever better cars, we also hope to bring performance and ride to a whole new level in addition to improving maximum thermal efficiency. We hope you'll keep watching our progress. Thank you.